Raider Nation, I'm going to do a Raiders mailbag. We're going to hop into that time machine. I'm going to look at something that we used to do very often here on this channel, but I want to do it a little bit different. So I'm going to put a pinned comment on the video that you guys are watching now, and I want you to comment your questions to this pinned comment for a chance to get featured here on the Raiders Report. Raider Nation, what's going on? It's Mitchell Renz here, host of the Raiders Report. And coming up on today's show, we're going to take a deep dive into the new kickoff rules and how they impact the National Football League, but also how they impact Las Vegas. Because based on these rules and based on the voting, I don't think that Las Vegas really wanted these to end up going down. Because the Raiders don't have DeAndre Carter, he's a free agent and he was their kick returner last season, I figured I would look at some potential kick return targets that are on the roster and then also that are still wandering out there in free agency since a guy like Cordell Patterson just signed a two-year deal with the Pittsburgh Steelers. On top of that, we got some new NFL trade deadline rules that if you don't watch this show often, I don't know, one of my favorite weeks of the year is the NFL trade deadline, and I'm excited that we got a little bit more time to talk about it. To make sure that you never miss anything going on around the Raiders, around the National Football League, hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications, and any time that there is an update, I promise you this, you're not always going to agree with me, but I promise you, you will not find anybody that's going to outwork me. So subscribe and join the program. So here are the new kickoff rules that got approved today, and NFL owners have approved the new kickoff proposal, which... For anybody that's watched the XFL, it's kind of the whole XFL style that they've been going with. The new rule will run this season, and it is subject to renewal in 2025. I'll be real, I am kind of hoping that it sticks around because to me it makes the game a little bit more fun and entertaining. Three teams out of the 32 voted against the new rule. The Raiders, the Packers, and the 49ers. So the reason why I wanted to do this video is because I think the Raiders voted against it because they weren't really planning on allocating some money potentially to a kick returner because, let's face it, it's been kind of a waste of position over the past few years. Now with this new NFL rule, kick returning is going to come back to the light of being a lot more important than what even some people in recent memory remember. So here are the new NFL kickoff rules. Under the new rule, 10 players on the kicking team and at least nine players on the receiving team will line up just five yards apart and won't begin running until the ball gets kicked back to the returner, meaning players won't be going full speed when they crash into each other with caused so many injuries on kickoffs in years past. Of the 22 players on the field, only the kicker and one or two kickoff returners will line up separately from those players who are five yards apart. The kicker will kick the ball, run from his own 35-yard line, 10 of his teammates will line up on the other team's 40-yard line. The receiving team's 9 or 10 blockers will line up on their own 35-yard line. The kick must land between the 20-yard line and the goal line. A kick that either goes out of bounds or lands short of the 20 will be awarded to the receiving team at the 40-yard line. A kick that goes into the end zone for a touchback will go to the receiving team's 30-yard line. So what I wanted to try to do here is create that picture and just kind of show you guys what to look for. So you can see the kickoff starting line. You can see the setup line for the other team. The landing zone now is where you're hoping Daniel Carlson is going to kick the ball every single time. If it lands in the red, then the offense gets the ball to start at the 30. If you kick it out of bounds, then it still goes to the 40-yard line. And what's really interesting is the formation. So when you look at the formation here, the blue X's are the kicking team. The red X's or the red dots are the receiving team. You're only allowed to have seven players on the line. So if you like look very closely, you see the nine dots, and you can see that there's two that are backed up a little bit. You're allowed to put seven of those players on the line at the 35, five yards apart, and then you're allowed to put those other two players. They just got to be backed up just a little bit. Think of it almost as like when a wide receiver lines up and checks in with the referee. Think of it almost something like that. So it's going to be a little bit of a different rule. I know it's a little bit strange, but at the end of the day, I kind of like it, and I like it because I miss special teams. I also don't like when my time's wasted, and I felt like every single time that they were getting ready to kick off the ball, nobody paid attention to it because it didn't matter anymore. So do you like the new kick return rules? Give me a yes, give me a no. Like, there are some rules that, no, I don't like because the hip you know, drop rule. I, I think at the end of the day, it's football, right? It's got to still be an entertainment. Yes, player safety is important, and with these kick return, kick return rules, I do think player safety is important, but they are adding value to the game. As soon as something becomes where you can't watch it anymore, like what the way 
When somebody kick it off, I wouldn't pay attention to it. I mean, think, of think about the amount of times you're like, all right, it's probably going to be a touchback. And years past, like many, many years ago, NFL teams would rack up, not teams, but the entire league would rack up like 40,000 return yards. Last season, it was around 12,000, the lowest of all time. They are trying to bring back special teams yardage, which I like. And if you don't like it, it's all good. But to me, this is something now that Antonio Pierce, Tom Telesco got a plan for because your kick returner that you had last season is no longer a part of this team. So coming up here on the show, I'm going to try to predict who I believe is going to be the Raiders kick returner this season. I'm going to go through the top candidates that are on the roster, and then I'm going to go through some candidates that are still out there in free agency. Because when I woke up this morning, I was going to do a video of should the Raiders go out and sign Cordell Patterson? Because as soon as I got the notey that the new NFL rules were there, I'm like, Cordell Patterson's going to have a much more important role this upcoming year. And if you're a kick returner, you probably should not have signed a deal with the team until you found out these new rules because now your stock is shooting up the board. Also, somebody's stock who's shooting up the board is our sponsor, Game Time. I love Game Time. And the reason why that I love them is because I don't want to have to stress about anything, especially when I'm getting tickets to an event. And shout out to Game Time for hooking up the nation here because buying tickets to your favorite event, it shouldn't be stressful. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, theater events near you with killer last minute deals all in prices views from your seat and their best price guaranteed game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets download the game time app create an account and use code chat sports for twenty dollars off your first purchase some of the things that i love about game time are last minute tickets the flash deals i also love the zone deals that they do it's easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area views from all seats in the venue the lowest price guaranteed event cancellation protection and probably my favorite thing about it is the all-in prices like when i'm looking for an event one of the things that used to drive me nuts about other competitors would be you know you go to buy a ticket and then all of a sudden you go to cash out or check out and you're like How'd that ticket just double in prices? And they're adding like all the other taxes and all that other bullshit. With game time, they tell you exactly how much it's going to be. So as soon as you click on it with the all-in price, and guess what? You leave and it's that exact same price. It legitimately helps you plan where you want to sit. Instead of spending all that time, where you're like, oh, that's where I'm going to sit. And then you go to check out and you're like, well, wait a minute, it's double the price. And then you go back and you have to look again. Not with game time. They're not going to do that to you. So obviously terms apply. Create an account, redeem code C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So one of the players that I thought about this morning was, should the Raiders try to bring back DeAndre Carter? Because at this moment, the person who was your main kick returner last season is still a free agent. And I'm not sitting up here saying Carter was great as a kick returner. He really wasn't. 11 returns, 262 yards. But think about that. Your main kick returner returned the ball in a 17-game <laughs> season only 11 times. It's not a lot, and I know that it's not a lot, but my question to a lot of people out there is, you know, would you bring back DeAndre Cutter? Does it make sense? I'll get into that here in a little bit more on today's show, but if we're just concentrating on the players that are on this roster right now, to me, there are three clear-cut names that could be your Raiders kick returner this upcoming season. Coming in here at number three, it's Trey Tucker, and if I'm being 100% honest with all y'all, the guy that I would want to do it the most is Tucker. To me, He's almost built to be a special teams player. He's electric. He's got the acceleration. It would be really fun and entertaining to watch him play. Last year as a rookie, no, he's got a lot of new things to learn. But if you really want to try to take your game to the next level, yeah, I, I get it. You can get hurt playing football. You can get hurt doing all these things. I would love to see Tucker. He's number three on my list, though, because I believe they want to get him more incorporated in the offense, which may be why they don't do it uh, with him going out there. Let's go to number two. I got DJ Turner. He's really only a special teams player. And I do anticipate that the Raiders end up at least bringing in a, I'll call it a versatile receiver that can also give you some special teams type of quality. And if Turner is the only player, like if he ends up making this roster, I do see him probably earning this rule because that's what he's been kept around for. The last player, and it's to me the biggest reason why they ended up keeping him, is Amir Abdullah. Yes, Amir Abdullah offers you the ability to pick up a screen pass on third down. But Abdullah also has some special teams value. He's been a part of the kick return game. He's been a part of the punt return game before. He is still a good athlete. And 
when I look at a special teams player, it's not always about being the fastest. It's also about ball security and not turning the ball over. And of, out of all these three names here, the guy that I would have the most faith in to hang on to that football is, in fact, Amir Abdullah. So coming up here next on the show, let's look at some potential kick return targets that the Silver and Black could sign in free agency because there's still some names out there. But, like, at the end of the day, when you look at your Raiders special teams depth chart here, and I don't show this one often, I literally think it's just Amir Abdullah, DJ Turner are probably your only options as it stands right now. And if the Las Vegas Raiders do decide to put over Trey Tucker, cool. Like, we can add Trey Tucker to this list, but also when you look at the wide receivers in general, no disrespect to Wilkerson. No disrespect to DJ Turner. You still need to add another player to this rotation just in case Jacoby Myers or Devontae Adams or hell Trey Tucker end up going down because I'll tell you this, I do not want to see, <laughs> I don't want to see Wilkerson or Turner on a field in a game that actually matters. So when I woke up this morning, I was like, should the Raiders bring back DeAndre Carter? He is a player that has had some AFC West ties before, was a member of this team last season. Yeah, they didn't really use him in the receiving game all that much, but he can still kick return. So should the Raiders re-sign DeAndre Carter, I want you to type S for sign. I want you to type P for pass. My answer on this question is, if I was the Raiders, okay, obviously money, it comes down to money. Would I be upset if the Raiders signed him? No. Would I look at other avenues? Of course I would. But if you want to make sure that you can get a good bang for your buck, I'm okay with the idea of signing DeAndre Carter. He was on the team last season. He has the connection with Telesco when he was a part of the Chargers. On top of that, I would have more confidence in Carter than I would Wilkerson. I'd have more confidence in even him than somebody like a DJ Turner. And when Chugs and I were out at, for the Super Bowl, which is probably at this time like six weeks ago, Carter was there. And Carter was one of the players that I talked to. And he was very open to the idea of coming back to Las Vegas. He said that he enjoyed it a lot, though he was a lot surprised at what the Las Vegas lifestyle was like and that he enjoyed it. But if for him to tell me that he would like to come back and with all the connections on a cheap deal, I'm okay with it because what I don't want to do is go out and break the bank on a receiver because they're making some pretty big bucks in free agency. If you're like, no, Mitch, I'm passing on DeAndre Carter. Let's look at somebody else. Well, one of the names I do think that you could keep in mind is Jamal Agnew, really good athlete. Last season had 14 returns for 144 yards and was a solid like spark player. The other type of role that I want to be able to bring in here is somebody that can offer more pre-snap motion as well if you do ever decide to put them on the offensive side of the football. Like to me, the job that I'm looking for, kick returner, gadget player that I can use as a decoy. Jamal Agnew is an interesting one. This one does scare me a little bit. Jakeem Grant, he ended up in the last two seasons, I think he popped his patella tendon, and then he also popped his Achilles. So he hasn't played since 2021. But if you want to talk about a legit athlete, and he at one time was down in Miami, and he was an electric return player, offered you some deep speed. And because you're seeing the Raiders have some of those Miami ties with Patrick Graham, with Rob Leonard, you know, Adam Butler, Chris, uh, Christian Wilkins, John Jenkins, could you potentially look at a guy like Jakeem Grant? Another name that I'm going to throw out there, if you're like, nope, I don't want a smaller receiver. I want to be able to add somebody that gives you some special teams value in the kick return game, but then also could be a potential red zone option, a bigger receiver since, you know, Trey Tucker, DJ Turner, a little bit smaller, Jakeem Grant, smaller, DeAndre Carter, a little bit smaller, a bigger guy. So I, I would at least keep in mind as a LaVisca Chenault Jr. He has never panned out the way that I thought. I also do think that he can be a, a much better receiver than what you saw the past two years in Carolina. They just didn't use him correctly. He is a good athlete. Yeah, he's had some injury issues, but he is a good athlete to me. Another name that I'm going to throw out there is Byron Pringle. And Byron Pringle at one point, again, bigger receiver, 6'1", 200 pounds, has done some special teams work, but he has also worked with Champ Kelly. He was a member of the Chicago Bears at one time, so there's still a little bit of the connection there. And my biggest message that I can possibly put out there is this. I do not want to spend a lot of money on this position. I don't want to spend a lot of money on it. So if I can find a dude that's a really good athlete, that's got some special teams value, that has a connection or two with this organization that you can add in as that kick return guy, that way Trey Tucker doesn't have to get injured. That way it's not only just Amir Abdullah, because if you lose Amir Abdullah... I know this might not be 
that scary to some of y'all, but who's going to be your other back then that could be that pass catcher? Because I don't know if I trust Madison to do it. Yes, he's a good pass blocking back, but is he a good receiver? Not like Amir Abdullah. So I'm looking for a cheap option at kick returner, especially because the Raiders voted no. So I don't know how much of a big need they think it really actually is. The final thing that we're going to talk about here on today's show is the new NFL trade deadline rules. And this makes me happy because as a content creator, this gives me an opportunity to make a little bit more content. But for NFL teams out there, one of the things that I hated with the new NFL schedule was, think about it, you got 17 games and the old trade deadline was week eight. You're not even halfway through the season. Like, you probably don't know, are you in win-now mode still? Are you in total tank mode? Like, you're forcing your team to make a tough decision. If it was up to me, I would even extend the trade deadline even longer. Like, sure, now it's going to week nine. You get that extra week. It's halfway through the season now. And sure, maybe teams by week nine, no. Like, yeah, we're not going to make the playoffs this year. But for a Raiders team that I expect to be somewhere around that 500 mark the entire year, this gives you a whole nother week to be able to look at your roster and say, are we selling or are we buying? And I like the fact that they ended up doing this. So the trade deadline is now November 5th. And the fact that they ended up pushing it back is a big win for Chat Sports. It's a big win for all the content creators out there. And I'm not going to lie. I saw this and I was extremely, and I mean extremely, excited. Now, if you guys want to hit me up on IG or Twitter, I'm at MitchellRens365. I love when people ask me questions on social media. I also love when people interact with me online. Now, be respectful. You can always disagree with me. But I want people, when they disagree with me online, to at least... Be respectful, and let's have an adult conversation. Uh, I was live on a show yesterday. Shout out to Raider D. He invited me on his show, and we you know, squashed some beef here. But like, I, it was really cool to be able to make that connection, and the way that that connection was made was on social media. He invited me on the show, and if there's anybody out there ever that at one point has watched this show, is thinking about making their own podcast, if you want me to join it now that it's getting closer to the off season here, Now's the time to do it. The way that the easiest way for us to link up is, in fact, on social media. So please don't be afraid. Send me a DM at MitchellRens365.